Hey everyone, my name is Carissa. And my name is Tyler. And welcome to the Christ Fellowship Young Adult YouTube channel. We are the Young Adult Ministry of Christ Fellowship Church in South Florida. We're a community of young adults who love Jesus, are seeking after his purposes for us so that we can transform the culture around us. And we're so glad that you've made it here. And while you're here, go ahead and take a second to hit the subscribe button, get connected to all that we're doing, and you'll never miss a beat. Here you'll find a new message every week curated just for our young adults community that we get from Thursdays or 7.30 gatherings. You'll be able to watch and listen to our very own podcast, the Young and Adulting Podcast. Look out for all our special original music, content, and more from our young adults team. Yeah, check out the description below for more info on who we are, what we do, and how you can be a part of it. And share this page with a friend who needs to jump in and be a part of this community. Well, welcome to the CF Young Adults YouTube channel. Uh, guys, we doing good tonight? Is, is, there, is anyone awake tonight? Anyone? Okay, come on. Y'all, it's November. Welcome to it. Come on. Hey, uh, seasons are starting to come. Uh, if you haven't noticed, you're about to see a lot more New York and New Jersey license plates in the state of Florida. Come on. If you, if you know, you know. Uh, you've been here. It's called season. It's happening. People are coming down from up north because they're jealous of where you live. Because, hey, we live where people Hey, all my locals know, you know, hey, I love it. But hey, Thanksgiving's right around the corner. I love it. Come on, about to eat some mashed potatoes. Anybody else? Hey, this is completely unrelated to anything. Does anyone in the room actually like turkey? Yeah. Oh, there's a few of you. I feel like it's customary. Like you just have turkey. Like you endure it. Like you don't, but like, let's be honest. Who actually looks forward to eating turkey? Like if you had, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't, don't raise your hands yet. Over all the other sides, are you choosing turkey first? That, Gabe, Gabe, Gabe's choosing turkey first. I love it. Yeah, okay. But have you guys ever had deep fried turkey? Yo, change, changes the game. It's, it's, it's a different level. Um, if you haven't had deep fried turkey, make sure the turkey is all the way thawed out before you deep fry it. Water and oil, do not, do not mix. That is called casualties on site. So, uh, but Thanksgiving's around the corner. Uh, but guys, tonight we're starting a brand new series called Mythbusters. Come on, somebody. Who remembers Mythbusters back in the day? Well, like, hey, yeah, come on. If you were born after 2002, you, you don't understand. I'm sorry. Um, but hey, come on. Mythbusters, like before American Idol, before the Kardashians, Come on, before Bachelor in Paradise on Mondays and Tuesdays, come on, there was, there was Mythbusters, like the heroes of, of, of national television. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically these guys, the nerds, like they made a lot of money off of paying attention in school. So there's that. Um, but they basically, they, they did this thing where they're like, hey, if there's a myth out there, we're gonna, we're gonna bust it. We're gonna see if it's true or if it's false. And that's what their whole show was based around. Apparently, like, the, guy, the people that did the show, apparently they hated each other, which I, I don't know how you make a TV show for 15 years and not like each other, but that's what they did. And they did some pretty interesting myths. One of my favorites, um, I'm, I'm actually gonna do it, it's, it's so embarrassing. Are, are yawns actually contagious? Like, I actually, I feel one coming up right now. I don't know why. Um, Come on, anyone else ever done before you yawn? And what happens? Like the whole room just like erupts in yawning. Close your mouth, your breath stinks. Come on, stop. So yawns actually contagious. Uh, yes, they actually are scientifically proven that yawns are contagious. Who, who knew? Mythbusters knew. Um, another one that I have a personal uh, experience with, they did the uh, experiment, uh, is drinking water, does it cure like hot sauce or like when you, when you eat something hot? Um, no, it, it doesn't. It, it's, it actually makes it so much worse. Will, am I right? All right, this is another story real quick. So um, Will, Will, raise your hand real quick. Tell the people where you're at. Come on, there's Will. So uh, Will and I were a part of this, of this shoot for CF students. And because we love the kids, we were like all in. Like, let's do it for the kids. Yes. And uh, it was this, this relay race that we had to do. We crushed the first relay race. And we got to the second leg and they had a spoon of hot sauce for us, like waiting for us. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, do it for the kids. Like, I don't care what it is. Like, I'll eat it. And Will and I, we take these spoons, we throw it back in our throats and we're like, let's go. Like, we're winning this thing. And when I tell you guys, I like, I started to cry, like immediately, like on sight, like, like tears started coming out of my eyelids and I didn't know what was happening. And 
20 minutes later, we're still crying. And we're like, okay, what's, what's going on? And unbeknownst to us, they gave us the third hottest hot sauce in the world. Um, get this, a drop is equivalent to six pounds of chili. And they gave us a spoonful. We had the equivalent of 40 pounds of chili in our mouths. Yeah, literally, like, I, like, Courtney will tell you, I was, at, like, I cried, like, the whole day. Like, I was just on my couch, like, curled up in a ball, like, crying next to my dog. Like, I was out for a whole, whole day. And this is the best part. All I had was water on set. They're like, hey, you want some water? We're like, no, we don't, we don't want water. So the only thing to cure hot sauce is milk. And um, uh, Brayden, Brayden was a part of it. Um, Brayden has a dairy allergy, so I'm, um, I'm sorry, you guys can pray for, for Brayden. But, so milk is the only thing. So myth busted, uh, yeah, that happens. But tonight, we're gonna be kind of looking at some myths uh, in scripture. And I, I think, not, not in scripture, but in our world surrounding scripture. And here's the truth. A lot of us, we, we've grown up um, in this life and we, we kind of take things from other people, right? Like even some expressions we say, or maybe some things we think, we just, we take it. And we never actually fact check it for ourselves. Like, is what I'm saying biblical? Is what I'm saying true? And I think we've all kind of have like maybe our misconceptions in the room around a couple of topics. Maybe like God doesn't like people with a lot of money. I know like where I grew up, like that was a thing. Like Christians weren't supposed to have money. And that was a myth for me that I had to break. Because you know what it takes to do ministry? Money, like you, you need it. And so when we look at, we're gonna look tonight really just at scripture of, man, what does the Bible say? And we're gonna be debunking this myth tonight. As long as it's your truth, it's acceptable. So we're gonna be debunking tonight. As long as it's your truth, it's acceptable. Now off the bat, um, I'm not a theologian. Uh, I'm not, I don't have my doctorate in apologetics. Sadly enough, I'm, I'll, actually, I probably never will. I'm not smart enough for that. Um, so that's, that's not me. But, but here's the truth. Every single one of us, we need to be able to look at this book and we need to be actually able to say, this is the word of God of which I trust. Because this is what our faith is built upon. Our, our faith is actually built upon this book where, where we need to put our hope and our trust. And for us as Christians, we look at this book as our foundation, as our truth. We, we look at this book as, as God breathed, God inspired for us to learn what truth is in this world. And just as a society has rules that, uh, that govern our nation and govern the world, God has rules and governments in place that are gonna rule us as, as Christians. They're gonna be our guiding principles for us as we live this life. And it's not hard to turn on the news and, and see all different truths displayed all over social media, right? Or on advertising boards or even in conversations. And if we're gonna be able to debunk the, the myth tonight that all truth is truth, then we need to know first, what, what is truth? Where, where, do we, where do we start? And tonight we're gonna to be looking at the word of God and we're really gonna be breaking down what it means to look at the word of God. What do we do with it? So we're gonna learn how to, to know the word of God, to trust the word of God, and to apply the word of God tonight. And if we wanna know what truth is, we have to be able to do all three of those things. And the first is this, we need to be able to know the word of God. Come on, someone look at your neighbor and say, know the word of God. All right, for everyone who didn't participate, look at the neighbor you don't like as much, tell them no know the word of God. All the introverts in the room just like looked up to me like, I, I hate you so much. You made me say it twice. But you need, to, you need to be able to know the word of God. And here's the truth. It's not enough just to hear the word of God. You need to be actually, you need to know the word of God. And maybe some of you are getting flashbacks to, man, like elementary school or Bible study where you had like your scripture for the week, right? That you'd have to memorize and know. And um, if you're like me, I just memorized to get through the test. Anybody else? Any, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every college student, yes and amen. But the truth is the word of God is not something for us just to memorize. It's something for us to live inside of us because the word of God is, we're gonna get into this more. It's powerful. It's effective. It's actually useful for us as we go throughout this life. And Jesus, he actually knew the word of God better than anybody else. And there's a situation that we're gonna read about in scripture where knowing the word of God actually helped Jesus conquer the enemy. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter 
for <laughs> chapter four, verse one through 11. And we're gonna read 11 verses, so buckle up. Here we go. It says this, it says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels and you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered to him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. So we see this, this moment in scripture, right in the beginning of the, of the gospel of Matthew, four chapters in, that Jesus is automatically tempted by the enemy. And I, I wanna point out something real quick. If Jesus was tempted this early in his ministry, how many of us know that we are going to be tempted? We, we are gonna be faced with situations that we need to know how to discern the lies from the truth. Because here's the truth. Satan is actually described as the father of lies. Like in scripture, that is his name. So can I tell you something? Truth doesn't come out of his mouth. Lies come out of his mouth. And if we're gonna be tempted, chances are it's not gonna be like this crazy scenario. Chances are it's actually gonna be something a little twisted where you see a little truth, but then you also see a little bit that isn't truth. And how do you discern both? And Jesus, he actually uh, got tempted three times and each time he was tempted, it got more worse. Uh, like it it kind of like, here's rank one, like a hot wings. Here's a little mild one. And it just went down from there. And the first time we see Jesus tempted, he says, hey, turn these stones into living bread. And the enemy tempted his humanity for a second. How many of y'all been hungry before? How many of y'all never eaten for 40 days before? <laughs> Yeah, none of us, right? Yeah, and here's the thing. Jesus, 40 days into a fast, no food, no water, is now tempted with food. Jesus is, he's tempted by the devil in his humanity. Hey, if you really are the son of God, feed yourself. And Jesus kind of, man, he brushes that one off. He's like, come on, bro. I'm not even that hungry. And he says, what? In Deuteronomy 8.3, he quotes this. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And then he tells Jesus, kind of ranks it up. He says, hey, throw yourself down on this high peak. And this is what's crazy. Satan this time doesn't just give him a challenge, but do y'all know that Satan quotes the Bible? Psalm, 20, uh, Psalm 91 says this, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So automatically we actually see the, the test get a little harder. Satan knows the Bible. And Satan's actually bringing a test to Jesus. And what is actually interesting about this is if you read Psalm 91, it's actually all about how Jesus is coming to comfort you. So actually Satan is taking his scripture and he's, he's twisting it, he's, he's morphing it almost to fit the scenario that Jesus is in. And I, I wanna wonder tonight, man, how many times we're tempted by something that looks good on the surface but when we get into it, it's actually much deeper. Because on the surface, it looks like, well, Satan, how, how could you be wrong? This is what the scriptures say, but when you look at it, no, it's, he's taking it out of context. He, he's twisting it so that, that Jesus might, might trip up and get confused, but actually, no, Jesus catches him in his lie. Why? Because he knows the word God. And I, I wanna maybe challenge us tonight. Um, and and this, is, this one hits for me too. And I had to wrestle with this question, does Satan know the Bible better than I do? And if I'm being honest for a second, I, I think sometimes he does. And I don't think that's a, a call down for us to be like, oh, woe is me. I think it's actually a call up to say, man, if my enemy knows the battle plan better than I do, like, 
I gotta get my weight up. I, 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 have, to, I have to do something about this. And, and Jesus, he demonstrates for us that knowing the word of God fights off the attacks from the enemy, but, but Satan wasn't done. On his last time, he, he took Jesus up to this tall mountain. Just imagine it for a second, a mountain taller than me, right? And he takes him up there and, and he, he displays all of the splendor of the world to Jesus. And he basically says, hey, bow down, worship me. And everything that you see can be yours. Now, for some of us, we'd be like, Psh, what the heck? Like, what, what kind of tempt is this? But when you think about it, I, I actually think it's the hardest temptation because the devil is actually negating the cross. When we actually look at in Genesis chapter two, when, when man and women sinned, all authority was actually transferred over to the enemy here on earth. So it actually was the enemies to give away. And he's saying, hey, Jesus, you don't have to go to the cross. You don't, you don't actually have to die. You, you don't have to do what you came here to do. Here, here's a way out. Everything can be yours. You can think for a second, man, Jesus is, is tempted with this decision, but knowing who he is in Christ and knowing his word, knowing his mission, he can actually look right back at the devil and say, actually, that's not gonna happen because I, I'm not worshiping anyone else but the one true king of Israel. I'm worshiping my God, but I want us to put this in perspective for a second. I think some of us, we, we read these temptations and we're like, ah, it'd be easy. But the truth is you are gonna be tempted in every part of your life. You are gonna be tempted in the hardest parts of your life. I can't think of anything harder than actually not having to go to the cross and dying a death that was so terrible. But Jesus, knowing the word of God, could fight off the attack of the enemy. And aren't you so grateful? Come on, that he didn't take the easy way out. But Jesus looks at life and says, no, I'm not taking the easy way out. I'm taking the hard road. I'm taking the road that Jesus has, has done for me. And, and I wanna say this too. Fighting temptation is not gonna be the easy road. It's not gonna be easy. It's actually gonna take a little faith. It's gonna muster up something inside of you, but in the end, it's always worth it. Pastor John Maxwell says this, that everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything worthwhile is, is uphill. I don't wanna take the easy way out. If you guys have ever seen the movie, uh, yeah, this is my favorite movie as a kid. Y'all ever seen Catch Me If You Can? Yo, the best movie ever, right? Like, catch me if you can. If you don't know it, basically this guy makes millions of dollars counterfeiting checks. Like he, he studied checks so much that he could take a fake one, pass it for a real one, like go to Bank of America and be like, money please. And they'd be like, cool. And, that, and literally he did this, $2.5 million he stole in checks, like way back in the day. And funny enough, he went to jail, he got caught. But the FBI actually brought him on their team because no one could discern checks better than him. He could, he could take a fake one from a real one and he could know in seconds if it was real or fake. And I wonder, for the sake of the illustration, what if that was us tonight? That man, when lies come our way, in seconds we know. And it's a lie. It's, it's actually not, it's not for me. There's something better for me. So we have to know the word of God. Secondly, tonight, we need to trust the word of God. Come on, someone say trust. Come on, trust the word of God. We need to trust the word of God. It says here in scripture, Hebrews 4.12, it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And I, I, maybe I'm not, I'm not the only one in the room. Have you guys ever read the Bible and the Bible reads you? Like, right? You're like, ouch, Lord, that hurt. Like, what? I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that today. Are you, are you kidding me? And if I'm being honest, there's no other book that I've, I've ever found in the earth that when I read it, it immediately reads me and tells me what I need to know about myself. And honestly, what I can discern from this is, man, I, I need to trust the word of God because no other book reads my mail. Like, anyone ever done it before? You're like, Lord, did you, did you read my Twitter? Did you read my email? Like, what's, what's going on? And, and no other book actually prompts something to us. It, it makes us to look inwardly so well, but not only looking inwardly, but you also, man, you don't feel like shame. You feel like, okay, the Lord is actually prompting me to look within myself. Now, I know for some of us in the room, we, we look at the word of God and we're like, it's a book. How, how do I know 
that this book, like how, how, do, I, how do I anchor my faith on, on a book? Like, can it be edited? Can't the publisher just add whatever they want? Like, how do, how do I do this? And I, I wanna give us just a little history lesson for a second. Um, there are more copies of the word of God than any other book in history. When we look at even Plato's Republic, which is by philosophers like esteemed like in philosophy, right? That's like their holy grail. The earliest copy they have is 1000 AD. It was written around 90 BC. When we look at the word of God, the earliest copy we have of some gospels are four years after they were written. Believe that for a second. Like that's how many copies we have of the word of God. It has been carefully preserved. Believe it or not, um, who knows about the monks? Anyone know about the monks? Some of us know about the monks. So listen, crazy enough, the monks back in the day, um, they would go to monasteries, but they would commit their lives to one chapter of the Bible and they would copy it verbatim day by day. And it would actually go through seven different overseers to make sure that it matched up with the previous manuscript. Think about that for a second. I read Psalm 121 to you, eight verses. A monk spent his entire life preserving that for you. I'm gonna write it over and over again. I, I'm, I'm gonna preserve it for you. This is why we can trust the word of God because number one, whenever we read scripture, man, it, it reads us. We automatically feel it. Like we know that God is alive and he's, and he's working and we can actually look through history and we can see people, families, generations that have given their lives to preserve this word, not for them, but for the next generations. I just wanna encourage you today, if, if you're having trouble trusting the word of God, I, I challenge you, look into it. It's the most preserved book in all of history. People will swear by it day and night. Crazy enough, there are things that like, archeologists have looked to the Bible to fact check themselves. They'll be like, this city is here. They'll be like, no, it's not. Hang on a second. Yeah, it was. And they're like, okay, trust the word of God. And then lastly, if, man, if we're gonna battle truth tonight, we, we can't just be hearers of the word. We can't just trust the word, but we have to apply the word. We, we have to actually uh, apply the word of God to our life. And, and here's the truth. Information without revelation is a waste. Information without revelation. It's a waste. It's knowledge. It's something you're gonna remember for a test and forget the next day, but revelation changes you. Revelation makes you look inward. It makes you actually examine yourself and, and actually change and actually look and say, okay, well, God, if, you're, if your word says this and, and I'm not doing this, then naturally there needs to be a response. There needs to be a shift in the room. But I also wanna to talk to the Christians in the room for a second. When we apply the word of God, the word of God is a weapon. If you don't know this, um, in Ephesians chapter six, it talks about the armor of God. It talks about how the word of the God is the sword of the spirit. I love that so much because I make so many jokes. I'm like, ah, oh, drop my sword today. And everyone's like, what? And you're like, I don't know, read your Bible. Um, when we look at the word of God, man, it, it, is, a, it is the sword of the spirit. And when we think of a, of a sword for a second, what does a sword do? Man, it, it's used for what? Attacking, right? Like you, you could have cut somebody, like you're going after somebody with that thing. And when we look at the sword of the spirit, man, we're, we're attacking our enemy. We're actually going after the one who's bringing attacks on us. A couple, uh, around, around a year ago, um, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't really suffer with anxiety much in my life, but um, I remember 1 a.m. one night, I, I, I think I had a panic attack for the first time. And I, I, I did not know what to do. I was laying in my bed, freaking out, just wondering when is it gonna stop? When will my thoughts finally calm down? Like, how, how do I get out of this? And if I'm being honest, my only response, and I'm, I'm so grateful that it was, my only response was scripture. There, there was nothing else I could do. 
Uh, I took out the sword and I said, hey, Philippians 4, 6, 7 says, hey, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, bring it to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, what? Will wash over you in Christ Jesus. I looked at the devil and said, hey, I am the head, I am not the tail. Like, I am, I am anointed, I am appointed, he has called me a son, he has called me his, and listen, whatever is going on in my mind right now, I have all authority over it, would you leave in the name of Jesus? And suddenly, things shifted. So suddenly the anxiety that I was feeling went away because we brought out the weapon. And some of us, man, whenever something happens in our lives, scripture is not our first response. It's running to our friend and venting. If I'm being honest, Dave, if we're gonna know the word of God, we, ha we have to apply the word of God. And I, and I wanna maybe present this to you for a second. Think of the word of God as your spiritual cheat code for a second. Y'all ever play video games growing up? Come on, somebody. Any, any Lego Star Wars people? Man, that game was awesome. Yeah, some of you in the room. Yeah, and you had the invincibility, invisibility, maximum power. You went through Darth Vader like nothing. And I wonder for a second, what if we looked at scripture <laughs> like the ultimate cheat code against the enemy? I wanna challenge you with this. There's no attack of the enemy that this book cannot overcome. There isn't. If we look at scripture, the enemy has been defeated once and for all. <laughs> There's not like this new attack, this new strategy that's like, oh, maybe this will get him. No, everything in this book actually conquers over the, the enemy in just one second. I wanna encourage you one more time in the book of Psalms, it talks about when you worship, it says that your enemy has to take a Shabbat. Shabbat basically is the Hebrew word for Sabbath. It means he has to stop. <laughs> it literally says that when you worship, your enemy has to take a seat and close his mouth and watch. And I wonder how many of us, man, when, when storms come our way and waves come our way, we run to everything else, but God has given you a book that is full of commands and full of scriptures that if we just exercised it, man, what would our world look like? What would your world look like? Man, what if next time anxiety came knocking on the door, man, we just pulled out this word of God and we said, anxiety, you have no right over my mind. I'm gonna declare the peace of God over me. Come on, I, I want us to encourage you tonight. If you're in Christ Jesus, this, this book is your cheat code. But man, maybe if, if you don't know Jesus tonight, I, I wanna encourage you, all of this is available to you. See, here's the truth. If, if you took everything I said tonight, but you didn't know Jesus, it, it wouldn't line up. And I, I don't want you to walk into the room tonight and think that this is some self-help kind of Tony Robbins, he's right over there. It, it's, that's not tonight. This is actually not self-help. This is self, I need help. Like, <laughs> like I, I can't do it alone. And, and if you're in the room tonight and you're, you're just, you don't know Jesus, this is your first step. Everything that I've talked about is, is really for us as believers because the one who lives inside of us is greater than is he who is in me than who is in the world. He, and here's the good news tonight, for anyone that doesn't know Jesus, you, you can. <laughs> Romans 10, 9 actually says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that you will be saved. Like the venture level to Christianity is it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. Confess, believe, and live. And if you're in the room tonight, I just wanna encourage you, it's the best decision you can ever make. The benefits of knowing Jesus will far outweigh anything else this world can give you. So friends, tonight, I, I wanna leave you real quick. I'm a little over my time, I'm sorry, but I wanna encourage you tonight. Like we can't just look at this book and say, yeah, that's nice, it's something I read. No, this book is actually the cheat code to your life. And if you commit to knowing it, commit to trusting it, commit to applying to it, your life is gonna look radically different. So I wanna encourage you tonight, man, not all truth is truth. This word of God, it's your foundation. It's your truth tonight. So Jesus, thank you for every single, God, young adult in the room. God, thank you for, um, God, your word. Thank you that it's been carefully preserved, that God, you have breathed on it, that God, it is so useful for everything that we do. God, thank you that for those that are in Christ Jesus tonight, God, we have an anchor that we can hold to. 
And I just wanna pray for anyone in the room tonight that, that doesn't know Jesus. And um, we're not gonna make it weird. It doesn't have to be weird, but man, if you don't know Jesus tonight, I just want you just to slip your hand up real quick on a count of three, one, two, three. Yep, yep, it's all good. No one's looking around. And we're just gonna pray this prayer tonight. And we're just gonna say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving me. I invite you into my life, make me new, make me whole, and I'm gonna serve you the rest of my days. So God, tonight we thank you that we have your word. And God, we thank you for the truth that you've shown us tonight. So God, we love you and we thank you. And everyone said, amen.